Such a strange, strange animal. Well, the ocean is so bizarre in, in and of itself. There's just so many weird creatures. Welcome back to our channel, where science meets terror. Brace yourself because we've got a wild ride for you today. Scientists recently captured something in a river that had them shaking in their lab coats. This shocking incident will make you question everything you thought you knew about the depths of our waterways. <laughs> that might have just been 15 feet. It might be a regular grave. Yeah. Either way, it's fucking giant. Join us as we dive deep into the science behind the horror and uncover the spine-chilling truth about what scientists just captured in a river terrified them. Let's start with the armored Amazon giant. Have you ever wondered what it would feel like to be drowned by a fish of all animals? Neither have we. But apparently there are some fishes that are big enough to drown you if you get too close to them. Meet the 10-foot-long fish, the Piraruku, also known as the Arapaima, is one of the biggest fish in the world. Yet it does not live in the ocean. It has deathly scales and hunts other water predators for meat. Yikes! Since they first appeared in 2009, this strange-looking fish has been actively chased by people in the Amazon River. The villagers became obsessed with these strange creatures, as they had never seen a fish quite like the Arapaima before. But we all know how curiosity kills the cat, right? Well, that's pretty much what happened. One of the villagers drowned because he went too close to the Arapaima, and another one fell off his rescue boat trying to find the remains of his friend. And guess who went to look for the second guy's remains? No one! The villagers were terrified of the Arapaimas. Initially, many scientists thought there were only one species of Arapaima fish in the world, but after the sighting in Malaysia, they had to change their statement. Since 2013, it is believed that there are over five species of the Arapaima. Although these fishes are freakishly long, they don't look very scary. And while they may be a little aggressive towards humans, they are just as vulnerable towards human predators. Due to the continuous hunting practices of these fishes, many governments, such as Brazil, have been successful in raising the Arapaima population. Speaking of weird fish, have you heard about the mutant monsters of New York's shores? If not, then today is your lucky day. Denise Ginley was walking along the East River shores in New York City in 2012 when she noticed something odd. At first, she thought she had seen debris, but upon closer inspection, she discovered something else. It was a weird, crooked tooth creature that she had never seen before, and by the looks of it, it seemed as if no one had seen a creature like this before. Before she knew it, this weird-looking animal was all over the news, the media had started calling it the East River Monster. Many people were confused as to what it is. The Parks Department called it a pig. But the public disagreed. Every person had their own theory. Some said it looked like a dog. Some said it resembled a rodent. And some thought of it as a sea turtle without its shell. But the name that really stuck was Mutant Monster from New York Sewers. Classy, right? However, this isn't the first monster to have washed up on this beach. In July 2018, an unidentified, scary-looking creature washed up on a beach of Long Island close to Montauk, New York. This creature was soon named the Montauk Monster. This is just one of the many times weird-looking creatures who have washed up on the shore of New York. But these instances have declined thanks to overfishing. You can never be too wary of these things as you don't know when the next gory monster might show up. Monsters aren't the only things you can find in rivers. Sometimes you can come across ancient artifacts, too. Have you ever stumbled upon a historic artifact on your way home from work? Neither have we. But it did happen to Steve Brooker and Rick Jones. These two were on the lookout for some historic junk along London's Thames River. It was just something they always did in their free time. They stumbled upon what they believed was a cannonball, but when they pulled it out, they realized it was attached to a chain and leg cuff. Astonished by their own discovery, they took the chain and leg cuff to some historians who determined that it was made up of high-quality iron, which was mostly used on prisoners in the 17 and 18 centuries. When it was discovered, the leg cuff was still tightly closed, which could mean one of two things. It was either cut off, or the prisoner was cruelly thrown in the water while he or she was still wearing it. 
Finding a complete set of irons was rare, and because it was made of high-quality iron, it made the discovery even more mysterious. The screw thread for the padlock was engraved after it had been cast. It may have been produced in Europe or Germany because English padlocks were made differently. We know you might be wondering how it survived decades underwater, but water is precisely what preserved this device. The river's anaerobic qualities kept its leather, ceramic, and metal intact. Due to this discovery, Steve and Rick were given the title of amateur archaeologists, and the ball and chain is currently on display in the lobby of the Museum of London Docklands for a brief period of time. We all know about the Titanic, but let's see another famous sunken ship discovered by a famous treasure hunter. In the mid-1800s, Arthur Fourier, a treasure hunter and antique dealer, was well known for traveling rivers to find artifacts. His favorite place of all time was the Seine River in Paris. On one of his expeditions, he discovered a variety of items, including jewelry and other artifacts. But these weren't the best part. His greatest find was an entire Gaelic ship, close to the tip of the Lee de la Site in 1862. This was a groundbreaking discovery, as this vessel dated back to before Paris even existed. This historic vessel was used to transport a variety of things, including wine, oil, fish, and more. Out of all the discoveries, fewer than 10 wrecks of this kind have been found. According to scientists, this is the best preserved Roman Gaelic ship ever found. The pine wood and resin on the ship all point to the fact that it was constructed near its sinking site. Have you ever dreamed about exploring the depths of the ocean and finding all the secrets buried there? Well, Jeff Bezos has. And boy, did he find something. In 2012, the billionaire got inspired by the Apollo 11 space missions and made the decision of finding the F-1 engines of the Saturn V spacecraft. These engines were briefly used and were dropped five kilometers in the Atlantic Ocean. Bezos gathered a team of experts from all over the world and used cutting-edge ditzy sonar to locate the remains of the long-forgotten F-1 engines. But what they ended up discovering was not what they were expecting. They had stumbled upon an entire underwater wonderland. It was like a dream come true for any astronomer. Bezos's team found enough parts to make two whole Saturn V F-1 engines. He showed the world, by example, what you can achieve if you put your concentration and, well, money into something. Enough about rare sunken findings. Did you know there is such a thing called river spiders? If you don't, you're about to find out. An infamous Australian researcher, Roger Simons, has spent his entire life studying underwater animals and fishes. Most of his discoveries have been published and are available online. One of his mind-boggling discoveries was made in 2011 when he researched several river spiders. His findings indicated that these spiders can not only survive inside water, but also create webs of air near their stomachs to help them breathe. These spiders occasionally come on land, and when they do, it is only for a short while to refuel their oxygen supply. These spiders use the water for mating, sleeping, webbing, and hunting. Scuba diving spiders, especially underwater females, have an intriguing appearance. The female spiders measure 7.8 to 13.1 millimeters and have large abdomens with short front legs. This improves their ability to produce and create webs underwater. On the other hand, males range from 7.8 to 18.7 millimeters. Comparatively to the females, they have shrunken stomachs with larger frontal legs, which helps them in diving. These species' color can be often misinterpreted as it varies underwater and on land. They give a striking silver appearance underwater, but on land, they have a blackish-brown color with velvet-textured abdomen. These species can mostly be found in the fresh waters of northern Asia and Europe, where they prefer still waters with low pH levels. These spiders are omnivores and prey on mosquito larvae, small crustaceans, daphnia, phantom, and midge larvae. At this point, we think all of us are amazed at how people can make the most amazing discoveries in the most random way possible. The next discovery was made by a boy in 1907. One evening, he was playing along the shore of the Alda River in England, where he saw a metal head poking from the mud nearby. Intrigued, the boy picked up the head and took it home as his new toy. Turns out, it was the bronze head of a Roman emperor. 
Many historians believe that the head was violently hit and broken apart from the rest of the figure. While they are confused on who would do such a thing, they are also amazed at how well the bronze head looked even after being inside water for months. What confused the people more was how the head managed to wash up on the shore of River Alda as there were no Roman settlements nearby. These life-size statues were often placed in prominent public places, hence it is possible that they previously existed in the Colchester colonial settlement. Many scientists believe that this ruthless destruction may have been made during Boudicca's rebellion against the British tribe's leader in 61 AD. However, there is no evidence supporting this claim, so it has remained a theory to this day. Up next is a beautiful and unusual design that was found underwater on the southernmost coast of Japan, close to the island of Amami Oshima. These designs stunned the world when they made rounds on social media via Japanese photographer Yoji Yukara. He randomly stumbled upon these geometrical patterns when he was staying on the island of Amami Oshima. The astonishing wave patterns, about 6 feet in diameter and 25 meters deep, were a true work of marine art. But this begged the question, who or what caused these patterns to appear? With the help of underwater cameras, researchers were able to distinguish that this was the work of fugu fish. This fish followed a strict pattern in order to form these designs. They swam back and forth, forming circular ridges to give shape to this creation. And it's obvious that this fish used its fins for them. These fugu fish delicately arranged shells inside the grooves to beautify their creations. And the best part is, they do this for love. Female fugu fish are drawn to these designs to mate and then lay their eggs in a place 15 minutes away from Tulum, Mexico. It's true when they say nature works in mysterious ways. As we said above, the ocean is home to many unsolved human mysteries and hides many secrets. So, let's dive on Bradley Russell experience this as he investigated one of the many intriguing cenotes on the Yucatan Peninsula. 10,000 years of history awaited them in the deep darkness of the ocean floor. Bradley and his team saw hundreds of skeletons waiting to be found that told the tragic story of the early settlers of Mexico. One of them was the skull of a 30-year-old woman that had three deep bruise marks all over it. She also had several crater-like deformities which showed the signs of a syphilis-like infection. According to scientists, she may have been beaten to death or left alone to die in a cave. It truly saddening to see how these people were treated. These skeletons have remained hidden from the world as their bodies were thrown in the water, never to be discovered. It's beyond amazing what we can find once we let go of our fear of diving and set out to explore the unknown. Apparently, ships aren't the only large objects that have drowned in the sea. Entire cities and civilizations have been enveloped by these huge bodies of water. Speaking of which, the city of Leo was intentionally flooded in 1959 in order to build a Xenon Dam at a depth of 40 meters. The water served as a pillar for the city, shielding it from wind, sun, and rain erosion. The imagination conjures images of travelers bathing in the streets of the lost city, exploring its hidden corners and labyrinths. The 600-kilometer-long Lake Shiendo, also known as the Lake of a Thousand Islands, is stunningly beautiful. But the real undersea treasure that can draw tourists is the Lion City. It is thought to have been established around 1,400 years ago during the Tang Dynasty. This city was rediscovered in 2001 and left the entire world completely speechless. Since then, it has been titled as a historical relic. Images show white temple houses decorated with traditional Chinese statues of lions, dragons, and phoenixes, showing the dedication of the 300,000 people who once lived here. As harmless as rivers seem, they're no better than oceans, as they also keep a fair share of treasures hidden beneath them when he discovered a similar treasure was found by a man in 2016 when he discovered a tank in the Don River. At first, he didn't think much of it, but when he pulled it out, he realized it was a U-2 T-34 Soviet tank from the Stalingrad military factory. It was most likely displaced in 1942. Shocking, right? One of the most amazing things about this tank was that there was no human remains inside the tank. It was completely empty. The tank was over 60 years old at the discovery, and yet it was in mint, perfect condition. 
There were no gunshot wounds or firecrack marks on the machine. It seemed as if it had never been used. And as it turns out, it was the only intact tank left from that era as all the others were destroyed during the battles during the first years of the Soviet Union's great patriotic war against Germany. Two theories have been suggested on how this tank sank in the Don River. Locals theorize that it was purposely sunk by the Soviet troops so that it doesn't fall into the hands of their enemies. However, this theory shows no evidence as the arms and weapons were not removed from it. The second theory suggests that the tank was probably moving along a platoon bridge when it accidentally fell into the river. This theory is most likely correct because nearby transport vehicles, sunken pontoons, and small vessels were discovered at the riverbank. Patriot Park specialists reported that the tank weighs 30 tons and is in excellent condition. It has been voted to keep in a museum, but the PPS says that it can be restored and with time can function properly. What do you guys think should be done? We vote for the museum! Are you ready for a dynamite discovery? We promise you, this one will leave you shook. The next discovery on our list is a special one for all dino enthusiasts. Severe drought conditions in Texas led to the Biloxi River drying up, and while this was extremely devastating for the locals, they were also shocked to see a usually large footprint found on the riverbed. It turns out the footprint belonged to an ancient dinosaur dating back 100 years ago. These tracks belong to the Acrocanthosaurus dinosaur. The 15 feet tall creature used to inhabit this region about 113 million years ago. It left paleontologists shocked as this discovery was not anticipated by anyone. We know what you're thinking. Ross would have been very excited. The drought, a blessing in disguise, revealed about 60 footprints and 140 tracks of this creature in different places of the river. It is an incredible discovery as the last time dinosaur footprints were found was in the year 2000, and they too were hidden under layers of water. Not only this, but paleontologists also found the prints of a 66-foot creature named Saura Poseidon. This species could weigh up to 48 tons when it reached maturity. It is theorized that the Acrocanthosaurus preyed on Saura Poseidon, which explains why their prints were found together on River Biloxi. However, these are not the only things that came up due to low levels of water in rivers during drought season. These include human remains, a wrecked ship dating back to the Second World War, and many other things which were found in River Lake Mead. While low water levels in rivers can help us in discovering different sunken treasures like human remains and WW2 shipwreck, in Indonesia, a different kind of discovery was made. After six years of trying, a monstrous Indonesian crocodile was finally freed. The croc had a motorcycle tire stuck around its neck, which was first spotted in 2016 by locals, earning it the nickname Boya Kalung Ban, which is a crocodile with a tire necklace. It is unclear how it became stuck, but of course you can blame it on humans and our selfish practices. The locals of the area tried to rescue it, but to no avail. After a while, they stopped trying as they were scared their practices would be misinterpreted because crocodiles are a protected species in Indonesia. In the year 2020, preservation officials announced an award for anyone who would rescue the animal from the tire. And while the attempts to rescue it increased that year, no one was successful, and the croc got even more restless than before. As the news started circulating internationally, many people came and tried their luck. Forrest Galante, an American outdoor adventurer, attempted but failed to catch it. Another famous crocodile wrangler, Matthew Wright, also tried to capture the animal but failed. He told Greg Jeanette, staff at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, that the Indonesian crocodile was the most challenging croc he had ever faced. But then, the Lords of Mercy finally answered, and a self-taught reptile wrangler was able to capture the animal in 2021. He told Reuters that he had captured many crocs and lizards, so this wasn't much of a hassle for him. He also said that his skills and experience are what helped him free the reptile. The wrangler, Tilly, set up a trap by using a rope and tying it to a log. He followed the animal for three weeks, tracking its every move. And whenever he would get the chance, he would try to capture the animal. After two failed attempts, Tilly broke the curse and finally freed the croc. We thought ships and bronzed heads were the only things that could stay preserved underwater. Apparently, we were wrong.
Something incredible has been discovered by scientists near Omsk in Siberia. It is a suit made of bone armor believed to have belonged to a Bronze Age elite warrior, and it's in near-perfect condition. It was buried five meters below water, and this is the first time in history that an artifact has been found in this area. This shocked the locals as no one knew where it came from. Once it was inspected, it was revealed that the armor was 3,500 to 3,900 years old. The armor was found in the Euridish River near the site where a five-star hotel is in the works. Now this discovery is something that will definitely bag them a few customers. While many artifacts found in this area are believed to be from the Krotov culture, this one is different and has researchers buzzing with excitement. It looks like a piece of evidence from the Samosi Minskaya culture, which was found around the Altai Mountains. Scientists say that it may have either been a gift or a spoilt of war because armors like these were very expensive back in the day. To give you a little context, they were more valuable than life itself. Scientists were interested in why it was found in a settlement because the armor, which was made of various plates made of joined bones, was not usually available in this area. A research investigator with the Omsk branch of the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography claimed that the armor belonged to an exceptional warrior with unique combat skills. Furthermore, it was stated that the armor's material was made up of horses, elves, and deer. Get ready to be shocked and disgusted, folks. The latest on the list of bizarre discoveries is this strange fish, now known as the Chernobyl fish. This fish was discovered in an unknown lake and posted online when a random guy pulled it out of the water upon noticing its odd features. This was a two-headed fish with two mouths and four eyes. There's no denying the fact that it was really scary. The picture started circulating on Twitter after it was posted on a page called Oddly Terrifying. After it was posted, it started a huge debate as thousands of people commented about their analysis of the fish. The most popular analysis of disturbing fish was that it was due to severe contamination in the lake that took place in 2017. Although most people were convinced with this theory, some marine biologists came forward and debunked this theory. They stated that this fish is an Asian carp. They proved this theory by stating that this fish was deformed and not contaminated as if it were contaminated, it would have been dead long ago. Many fishes that have been contaminated have slow growth and don't live long enough to grow fully as they are most likely to be eaten by other fish. This struck an interest in many marine biologists as they are now studying the reason that could have caused the fish to become so deformed. On the other hand, a user pointed out that the fish's top eyes were actually nostrils, whereas the eyes below were functioning eyes. This, of course, is just a theory and has not been proven yet. Whatever the reason for the fish's deformity may be, it has sparked a debate on social media on whether filming the fish and making fun of its appearance was the right and ethical thing to do. Many users have publicly shamed the person who made the video on his actions. This isn't the only deformed fish we have on our list. The next will leave you shocked. One fisherman, on his routine expedition, saw something incredibly unusual. He discovered a fish that, against all odds, had a will to survive. This fish only had his head while the rest of his body was missing. It was mutilated. At first, the man thought that it was some other marine creature, but quickly snapped out of it once he saw its fins and gills. He posted it online and said that he discovered this strange fish in the Maldives. It is safe to say that the fisherman made a groundbreaking discovery as the video quickly went viral on all social media platforms. We hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.